different uh, measures. Uh, no, not all of them got in. That's right. To roll back the BBT. Uh, it's 901. Let's head to the KUAM News Zoom room uh, where we have uh, Captains Eric and Carrie Rudd of the Salvation Army. I just wanted to get you guys on this little bit of an update. I know it's uh, been a while. Actually joining us from uh, sunny Hawaii where uh, I believe Captain Carrie just had a knee surgery. So I hope you're doing okay. Yep, doing good. Ready to get home. Right on. Ready to hit that quarantine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or or the long flight too. So I just right, hope it's yeah. not all totally packed full. Well, my mom just got out of quarantine yesterday and she had like very good remarks for the guard there. Uh, she was just, my mom's so positive. She was like, I love it here. It's great. They're so nice. Uh, <laughs> so I guess uh, there's one rave review. Uh, let's just get right into this uh, update. I know that we're kind of uh, winding our way towards the new normal, right? And um, I feel like you guys being on the front line uh, were, you know, people who need, um, whether it's food, money, any type of services, you guys kind of know, right, where we're at. So where are we uh, in terms of uh, people doing better, doing worse? What's the need like that you guys are hearing about? You know what? Um, the need is actually ramped up. Uh, it, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but uh, just last month in February, we had 48,000 uh, meals provided through our family service center. Um, people can come and get baby items, diapers, wipes, uh, feminine products. Uh, so the need continues to grow. Um, I don't know. I, I, I was kind of hopeful that as we have more openness in community that uh, that the numbers would decrease. But I think uh, it's we're going to be playing catch up for a couple months. And what are you hearing about? Uh, because you're right, it does seem counterintuitive because, OK, businesses are open 57, 75 percent capacity. We know that people have uh, started to migrate off to Pua. So those people who are hurting and in need, what are they saying to you? Um. The fact that people, not everyone's getting back to work yet, and uh, those stimulus checks aren't the silver bullet that we all hope that they would be. I, I don't know what your your mortgage or your rent is, or or you know if you have kids in the house, what it costs to feed them, teenage boys, and all of that. Um, it's just I think it's catching up with people, and the fact that they've had to burn through their savings and through that safety money that we sometimes are able to to put aside, uh, I think people are at the very end of that that line there. So they're they're now realizing, oh, I need to get a little bit help here because I still got to keep the power on. I still need my cell phone so I can actually you know find work if I'm trying to get it. Um, so it's I think reality is kind of sinking in a little bit. I'm hoping that we ramp out of this sooner than later, but uh, it seems like it's going to be a slow go for a little bit. So you guys we're still seeing about 20 clients a day. Uh, we're open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 11.45. We're closed on Friday so we can do casework, um, but we're, we're still serving the community on a regular basis. I know you guys had a utilities assistance uh, program that you rolled out. What was the response and uh, how many people were you guys able to help with that? We burned through that money really quick. <laughs> we went through $50,000 <laughs> super duper quick. Um, it was interesting. Uh, and I thought it was kind of a wise thing for the uh, utilities. All the people that were uh, in arrears with them, they gave them a notice and said, hey, Salvation Army has some money so they can help. And so they it kind of streamlined the process, actually. So folks that needed help were able to come in and get it. Um, in this interim, um, we, we uh, farewelled our, our former uh, family service case our manager and we have a, a new addition to the team and uh she's just an amazing woman so we're starting to kind of get our i don't know find our bearings again after after the transition so uh, we have a really good solid team and i think we're adding to the team aren't we we're adding to the team um two more social workers um and a warehouse worker um because of the needs of covid and so that'll, those will be 18 month uh, positions and we're in the process of making that happen. So all this funded through Gura, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Are you guys getting anything from the governor's direct appropriation of a 660 plus million or even if not from the governor, uh, anything from the American rescue plan? You know, I we don't, don't know. know yet. I've been off Island. So I, yeah, I'm not, we don't know yet. What we are doing is um, actually tomorrow, your tomorrow, the 30th, is uh, the groundbreaking for the Lighthouse Recovery yeah. Center Women's Recovery uh, Facility. And the governor will be there at noon 
Um, we're excited about it. It's it's a, a 16 bed uh, residential. There's 12 residential beds, two ADA and um, two uh, withdrawal management beds. And um, the theme for this particular facility is going to be trees because it's going to be rooted in family. Uh, the idea being is, and the vision is that we have a woman's facility and eventually we would like to have a family facility. We would like to be a, a one-stop shop, um, really <laughs> campus that helps um, all components of addicted families. So that's that's the dream, but uh, we're getting there closer tomorrow. What about- uh, so we, start, we try to provide a whole, a, a holistic uh, response to the needs. And, and we've seen how effective the men's lighthouse recovery has been. Right. And we've heard the need for so long. And, and our, our predecessors, uh, Majors Tom and Kim Stumbaugh had the foresight to initiate this. And so we're so excited because COVID put it on hold for a while because we lost uh, many of the contractor workers. So the fact that we're able to open this up uh, and get running again, um, very excited about the impact that we can have on our community. We are looking for community donors to help furnish uh, and as, as and help uh, fund the operations as well. So we're going to need help from the community, but um, we're getting it off the ground and we're really excited about it. It'll be so, it's something that's desperately needed on island, and um, I think it's going to have a huge impact as well. The neat thing about the women's uh, uh, facility is that they built in a place where kids, their their family can come and interact with them. Yeah. And so they've built that into the program so we can actually build the families back together. So that's one of the thing. main reasons why women do not go into um, treatment is because they don't want to leave their kids. Yeah. So if we allow for them to be able to see their kids and visit their kids and remain in relationship with their children, then they're more apt to actually seek help. Can you, can we get an update on uh, the LRC? Uh, I know that that's one of the shining stars uh, under you guys' programs. LRC is to capacity right now. Actually, and I got to give her a little plug. Um, oh, yeah. our, our director, Valerie Reyes, she uh, she just received uh, social, social worker, worker of the year. year. So their work, the team over there, I, I'm just so proud. I didn't pick them out, but I'm so blessed to be able to to partner and work with them. They um, they are changing lives every single day. And uh, the gentleman that we that we have built relationship with, it, it's really neat to see how dads are getting re-involved and reinvested in their families and their children's lives. Um, oftentimes with that whole addictive issue that we work through, it's all about me and my needs and I, and I forget everybody else. But uh, through this education process, they realize uh, that they have an opportunity to maybe be the dad that they never had. And uh, it's, it's an exciting thing. And the fact that we're able to take in new cases now, uh, throughout the lockdown, we weren't able to bring in new, new folks, but we were able to do the outpatient treatment. But uh, now we're, we're seeing new guys come into the residential program, and it's an exciting uh, opportunity. On a regular basis, and um, it's, the spiritual component is, is something that's really worthy of discussing as well. The, the men are actually coming to church. They're bringing their families. They're bringing their children. Um, and so it really is the holistic approach to um, recovery as a whole. It's not just about their classes and their AA or even just the sobriety or the sobriety itself. Mm. It's 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 about them changing their lives entirely. So they're starting to see that, and it's um it's inspiring. It's a really good team there. Really good team. I remember the first interview we did with you guys because um, uh, you guys had come from Washington State, and I know that they've got their issues with meth there. And I, I believe I'd. I don't know if I'd ask you to compare, uh, but now that you've been on Guam, feet wet, how do we compare to, to kind of what's going on stateside with, with crystal meth and the uh, use and I, abuse? I, I think the fact that we were a smaller community here, I think it really impacts us uh, even deeper than it does. Now, the numbers in, in uh, Pacific Northwest are, are staggering, but there's a lot of folks there. But here on island... Everyone's related to somebody. And, and so I think every family has a touch point and it has been affected by this, by this scourge. And so, you know, there's the uncle that we don't talk about or families are broken. And so I think the impact is actually uh, greater felt here than it is there because- Because it is smaller population. And it is, and it's just, and it's sad. I mean, these guys in our program, yes, we have guys that have been battling addiction issues for years and years and years, and they're, they're kind of old timer guys, but there are kids that are in their mid twenties and that have spent 
years in prison already because of this issue. And it's, it's, it's so exciting, though, to watch these 24 to 27-year-old kids. I mean, like, we're 50, so they're kids to us. They get it. But they finally start to get it, that they have a choice in their life and that they don't have to choose this lifestyle anymore and that there's a better way for them, for them to actually cognitively get that and then take the action steps to actually realize it. It's really inspiring. It's good stuff. It's, it's, it's why we do what we do. And there's so many, there's so many opportunities for, for help. And there's so many tools. And I think uh, being clouded in your judgment, you just think that you're on your own and you just got to figure it out and white knuckle it. But there are a lot of people on island that want to help. We want to restore our communities. We want to restore our families because um, we know that way Guam is going to thrive even more. Uh, but like you said, this this meth thing is it is a terrible beast. And it and it I don't know, it strikes families ev everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're if you have money in the bank or if you have a steady job, people lose all of that in pursuit of whatever the lie is that, yeah. this, that this drug tells us. Yeah. How crucial is it when you, because you talk about guys in, in the program who've already done, you know, a few years jail time. But when you reach that person who's like right there, right about to turn the corner to a life of crime, when you reach out, you touch them and you make that difference. How crucial is that? Not just for you guys the peers and the peer counselors uh, is is absolutely imperative that we get people before they uh, get into the prison system because a lot of our guys it's not jail it's prison it's it's real deal time yeah. and that will really affect the rest of your life your ability to get a job your ability to rebuild you know and, and so if we can put a stop gap in there and uh as a community, I, I think it is as we we're going to try to open up our, our building for NA and AA and some of those opportunities. We're some not of those at the church for those meetings and youth youth programs and stuff. It just I, those are all stop gaps that will help this process because uh, if if you're living in a silo and you have no support around you that you can see or that you can realize it, you just you're just going to live by your own choices and it's devices. It's all about community. Teaching these guys and these women that. You can do this in community, but you cannot do it alone. Um, some of the guys like want to, I've heard it said, I want to make a living, but I just don't know how to do it legally. Yeah. Right. So it's about showing them that it's the harder way, but it's the better way. And it's not as glamorous and it's certainly not as quick, but um, it's much more rewarding. And so just showing them a different way and having them try it um, and then setting small goals that they can achieve yeah. um, and, and then they can feel successful as they go through the process. It is interesting though with, with so many of the younger guys, uh, everyone's still wanting that immediate, I don't know, I guess I'm an old guy from the 70s and, and it, we realize things take longer but now with the instant message and everything, we want instant fix and it's not an instant fix. We don't get into this addictive lifestyle and broken families and all of that overnight. It takes time to, to get into that, and it's going to take some time and some investment and some hard work, honestly, to come back out. Really what it's about is just investing in these men and women and letting them know, hey, you're worthy. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of the work that we're putting forth for you. You're worthy of this investment because God loves you, and we love you, and we want to make a difference in your life. And and. The more you tell them, the more you show up consistently, the more they start to believe that. And they realize, hey, I am worth something. I can do something. And then they start to turn it around. So it's just about that consistent breathing into their lives. And, and I don't know it, it, if you've been touched by addiction in your family circle or sphere, but um, it, I don't know, it's just a devastating thing. And, and I go back to the Bible, Genesis 126. God said, let us create humankind in our image. So I look around and, and sometimes people have a hard time with a guy standing out on the street with a sign and, and they're in their own filth and all of that. But that person was created in God's image. That person is someone's brother, someone's sister, someone's mother, someone's aunt. And we have to realize that it's not just a homeless guy or an addict or whatever. That's someone's that's someone part of someone's family. And if we can restore that, what a wonderful opportunity. Hey, man. Let's talk about uh, food food donations. I know that you guys got a bunch of great donations over the holidays. Uh, how's the food bank looking? Are we uh, shaking the tree on that? 
And then uh, maybe come round robin with the thrift store operation and uh, any ways that people can reach out and help the the army and the people that you guys help. We we are always uh, loving if people are able to drop off any kind of food. Um, now we did have a lot of support during Christmas, but during this time of the year, it kind of uh, kind of <laughs> dips a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if if people were able to to offer you know, strike that opportunity and, and, and provide food, we will always put it to good use. We did get some donations from schools and different service groups for um, Easter Sunday. And uh, so we were able to gift some of the community kids with um, different toys Lots and baskets, baskets yeah. and, and things that were fun like that, which is always a good time. The crew um, there, just a shout out to the staff that have been there, they've been running the show, we've been working remotely, but they've been holding them down the fort and doing a great job doing it. And you said uh, <laughs> the thrift store, did your son ever get over there to pick up his LPs? Not yet, we're, we're gonna go though, depending on what you say next. You guys right, are... no, that, the store, they always are having good stuff. Doris is, she finds the best stuff and puts it out. And uh, I don't know, I just, I like to go over there just to wander through. I'm a book guy and uh, you can get books independently, but you can go over there and she'll sell you a box of books for five bucks. I mean, holy cow, it's summer reading time. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful. And she has good clothes. Oftentimes the stuff, it comes in brand new with the tag still on it. So you're getting a brand new item at pennies on the dollar so she does an amazing job at taking what seemingly would look like junk and turning it into treasures for people one person i, mean, I don't know how she does, i don't know how she does it but she does a fabulous job she does she yeah. really does well we want to commend you guys for the work uh you guys are doing and, and your staff definitely and you know don't be strangers come back around happy easter Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter to you. All right. Thank you so much. Captains Eric and uh, Carrie Rudd of the Salvation Army. Uh, definitely uh, hit the ground running, I'll say, um, with their assignment here on Guam. Of course, uh, replacing uh, <laughs> Major Tom. <laughs>